if you live in Sligo, you will have heard of this festival. It's absolutely incredible. And if you don't live in Sligo, then you need to come. And every July, mark a date in your diary. It's the amazing Cordia Festival. And I'm here with the director and founder, Tara McGowan, and she's going to tell us a bit more about it. So, Tara, tell us first of all, how did you come up with the idea of the festival? Hi, Val, and thanks so much for having me on your podcast. I'm delighted to chat with you about Cordia. And so, I mean, it's been it's been growing for quite a long time. When I moved back to Sligo in 2000, I started working with Blue Raincoat Theatre Company as their general manager. And then a couple of years into that, between Kieran McCauley, Niall Henry and myself, we set up a, in fact, we were approached by some parents of young adults with Down syndrome. And they asked, would we be open to drama classes for their young people? We hadn't done that before. We were like, yeah actually we'd love to do that we need to kind of research we need to figure out what's the best way to teach drama classes to young people with down syndrome and anyway this is actually the beginning of Cordia. this was the very beginning so we started running workshops and putting on shows and meeting these wonderful talented creative young people and from that that and also a kind of a desire I had since moving back to Sligo, having been away for all of Sligo Arts Festival and thinking, oh, it would be really great to have an arts festival in Sligo. We don't have one right now. So those two things kind of merged. We started in 2003 with a sharing of the work that we were doing. At the time as well, Globe House opened up in Sligo in 2003 and we wanted to reach out to the new communities who were coming into Globe House at that time. So we started collaborating with a number of artists who were working in Globe House and just having this like community celebration of new people that we were engaging with at the factory performance space, which is the home to Blue Raincoat Theatre Company. And, and then from there, just opening it out and inviting other various artists from different ethnic backgrounds and different communities to come and celebrate, um, to have this kind of community art celebration at the factory performance space. And this is a long story, but I'm coming to the, in 2008 then, I suppose I decided, are we just in discussion? Because I ran it within Blue Raincoat Theatre Company to kind of make it its own organization. And so that was in 2008. And from that point, we started curating work in venues and spaces all over Sligo. And it's kind of grown from that point to where it is today as a multidisciplinary arts festival, uh, which takes place all over Sligo town and county, but which stays true to the roots of really wanting to be inclusive, diverse and accessible. And you've really hit the nail on the head there because it's so inclusive now. And the fact that it does go all over the county, like you had before you've had places in Ross's Point, you've had Ballymoat. And I know there are plans for that this year. And we'll get on to that in a minute. And also the diversity of the people. When you see the volunteers, they're from all different backgrounds. There's a smiling face. There's a huge welcome. And if you don't know anyone in Sligo, because I go to things on my own, you'll never feel alone when you're part of this festival and I think it's incredible testament to you and to your team and I don't think there's a very big team maybe you'll tell us a bit more about that well thanks Val I'm actually delighted to hear that you come along and you do feel welcome as soon as you come so the way it works at the moment there is myself and my colleague Stephanie Paula Mm -hmm. Uh, she's a festival administrator and she's part-time so there's one and a half of us not that Stephanie's a half you're not (laughs) but you know we're we're 1.5 people year round Mm -hmm. and so we kind of work together with our board and also with a number of committees so there's a you know Cordia in the park committee there's a Cordia visual committee so there are people who kind of work behind the scenes year round to so what what Stephanie and I would do you know curate the program fundraise apply for a million grants network with people you know work with sponsors and patrons and obviously go and see a lot of work meet with artists hear ideas all of that happens kind of year round. And then during the festival itself, the team then swells. And that kind of happens really only across maybe May, June, July, where we have, you know, excellent production managers, project managers, sound engineers, you know, artistic crew who come and build everything and make it happen. And you mentioned volunteers. And honestly, we couldn't do it without volunteers. And the volunteers are fantastic, 
really fantastic and they do come from everywhere and I think it's grown over the, the past number of years so we obviously work with Sligo Volunteer Centre we have Amy O'Hara and Sandy Porter are our volunteer coordinators and they've been fantastic at you know we set up one of those whatsapp groups everybody loves a whatsapp group um but just you, you know kind of finding out what people's interests are trying to match people's interests to the events um for us it's really important that the volunteers have a really good experience and they are actually the face of the festival they are the people that audience meet when they come so so far the feedback from volunteers is also really really important to us because they are actually at the events seeing how everything is is working and quite often they're the ones who come to us with going well you know what actually it'd be really great if you had a sign there so people you know so yeah so it's it's kind of you know two people who work year round quite a number of voluntary committees and our board who also support the work year round and then we swell to a team of probably about 16 amongst various crew but at the moment, we have 70 volunteers on our WhatsApp group. So it's huge. <laughs> it's really that, huge. I don't know how you keep up with it. I'm exhausted just listening to that. So you mentioned Cordia in the park. And that's really, if you haven't been to that, you need to go to that. So it's a free family day. And there's something for everybody. I have laughed so much there. I remember there was a guy and he, I don't know what he was doing, but he was firing stuff at the audience anyway. And he just had me in stitches. And then you've got the Samba band. There's every year there's something different. So even if you've been other years, you need to come back because there'll be something that you haven't seen before so can you tell us a bit more about some of the other events and also Cardia in the park because I don't know what you've planned I've vaguely looked at the brochure but not properly looked so if you can tell me more about what's happening and and what's going on for the week so it's from the 6th yes from 6th of July and it runs until the 13th of July so really on Saturday the 6th like we have four visual art exhibitions and they all open on that day so there's Cordia Visual which is our open submission exhibition at the Hamilton Gallery there are two connected exhibitions at the model that's the Wandering Gaze which is um, an exhibition of Yeats work where he explores nomadic peoples and Bafusha which is an exhibition of six contemporary artists from traveller heritage background sharing contemporary work and those both of those exhibitions are part of what is called the Hereditas project which is a project Cordia started last year with artist Seamus Nolan and in collaboration with Sligo Traveller Support Group so that project is really exploring traveller culture and heritage over the past 100 years in Ireland and contemporary art today from the traveller community. And then finally, we have uh, the photographic exhibition, which is back in Ross's Point this year on the Cubes, which is curated by Yvette Monaghan and celebrates four contemporary photographers on those Cubes. And there, people really look forward to seeing them coming back up again in Ross's Point every year. So then, you know, we go on, there's literary with Sinead Gleeson, there's music on Saturday evening, Cordia in the Park on the Sunday, which is a free event for all and is a really lovely family day. And as you mentioned, there's circus, there's puppet making, and there's music. So we've Stephen O'Dowd, who, of course, from a well-known musical family, the O'Dowd family, he's sharing his original work with this, with um, his original music at Cordia in the Park ahead of his um, CD, which will be released later on mm-hmm. this year. Um, Ari Moja are a fabulous migrant women's group who are celebrating their own cultures through music and dance, and they'll be performing at the park. Uh, and then there's a lovely range of food from, you know, different places in the world. The Sligo Global Kitchen. We have the Syrian cuisine. Ari Moja are also bringing the Ari Moja kitchen to the Peace Park. And Simon, who does our usual, you know, burgers and hot dogs. And then throughout the week, really, there's there's there are circus events moving to Mullochmore, Ross's Point, Ballymote, Strand Hill. There's visual, literary, new theatre in the factory performance space. There's actually so much going on in Queen. We're delighted with Queen Maeve Square, so we can't wait to share events for the public for free in Queen Maeve Square. We have this fantastic duo from New Zealand. They're touring Europe at the moment, which is why we can have them in Ireland. And this is a beautiful aerial dance piece with Chloe Loftus and Rodney Bell on an eight metre high truss in Queen Maeve Square. So it'll be quite spectacular. And our closing event this year, we've been working with a number of different communities to create a closing procession. You can expect a giant warrior Queen Maeve to be brought from the city hall down into the square. And we've been working with Sligo Youth Theatre, Faroiga, Cranmore Co-op, 
Um, we'll feature Arimoja, um, Toxic Dogs, and a lot of the communities who work year round. In, in, and that, that will be kind of the culmination of a, of a closing uh, celebratory event. Everyone's welcome. That sounds amazing. I'm just excited listening about it. So we really need something like that. And hopefully the weather might stay on our side. It's not looking great at the moment, but we'll see. You can't do anything about the weather. So going back over the other years of festivals, has there been a highlight for you or is it like choosing a favourite child? It it would be a bit like choosing a favourite child. And it's always hard when people ask me, oh, what are the highlights, you know, in previous years or what are the highlights um, this year but I you know a highlight for me and for the team is always when you see people coming together and experiencing something collectively you know and it, it's when you when people talk about transformational art experiences it sounds rather grand and lofty and really but I actually really believe you know events like this they do transform and they make you know for whatever reason, you know, it, it, it kind of can help us to see things in a different way or think in a different way or meet people we wouldn't have met before and try and see things from another perspective. But also this idea of coming together as a community and celebrating, it's so important uh, and necessary. And I hope that we, I mean, this, this, I'm just looking forward to people coming together, to listening to music, to hearing new um, work by authors to, to having new experiences like we're bringing Juan Catala is a, is, a, is a Catalan street performer who I had the pleasure and, uh, and privilege of seeing him in Spain last year he's bringing a piece to Hazelwood House and I think as well bringing people to new venues that's really exciting so this year we're, we're bringing new work to Temple House to the forest beside Temple House and also to Hazelwood House and these are very, very experiential pieces. They're very, you know, so people are being brought on a journey. And both the events, Prologue at Temple House and Idiophona at Hazelwood House. And uh, so, you know, it's, it's kind of always fun to, to kind of bring people to new places and experience something different. And it's all about connection. So they're not only connecting with each other, they're connecting with the place they live in. And as you say, places may, maybe they haven't been to for a while, you know, Temple House, not many people may have been there. I know it used to be open on Heritage Week. So it's lovely that people do get a chance to go to these places that maybe they've only seen photos of. Now, the last question I want to ask you is, do you get a chance to rest during the festival? Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely not. But that's OK. I'm so used to it. You know, it's yeah. kind of like you're running on adrenaline. Yeah. You're kind of from morning until night I actually try and get to everything um yeah (laughs) which is a bit crazy but (laughs) I need rollerblades Val (laughs) they wouldn't maybe work very well across all terrains but um but yeah I mean it's really fun and uh, you know obviously it's obviously I get a lot from it as well personally you know I mean it's it's actually I, I do feel like it's a privilege to work in this space and and to have these experiences and to see to witness all of this happening in Sligo um, and it is it really is a team effort, though, as we grow, you know, it's fantastic to have both the support of all of our team and all of our volunteers, but also the venues we work with, you know, the people who are kind of running, you know, County Council and Queen Maeve Square. And it, when people say it really takes a village, it, well, it does. It takes a town and um, we have so much support from so many different areas. And even, you know, yourself, Val, and coming on this podcast and talking about it, every little piece, everything matters and everything helps so so yeah no I don't rest but but there are thankfully a lot of people who are also running around like crazy like myself (laughs) Mm -hmm. well I just want to say thank you for creating something so magical in Sligo and you've put a really positive spin on the arts and I love the inclusion aspect it's just something incredible and very well done for that and thank you for taking part in my podcast thanks so much Val it's a real pleasure to chat with you thank you